Hello everyone and welcome to Nate's Vintage Trains. In this video I will be firing a coal or operating a coal-fired steam locomotive for the very first time with the help of Richard who has been bringing this engine back to life after about 30 years of not being used and just sitting in the Southern California Live Steamers Clubhouse. Also get some special appearances by Alex, another friend you have seen on the channel, as well as the president of the club, Mr. Tom Downing. Hi Tom. There will be some antics here and there, but it's all just for fun. This channel is mainly for fun, so it's not really too formal in this video, but you'll get the idea. Anyway, I'll stop talking and only butt in when I feel necessary, so please enjoy the video. At least I'd like to do the other side. <laughs> yes, that's why I'm showing you this side. So, um, after the cup, that's pretty much it. This is our sniffer valve that this man graciously fitted. Okay, now it's open. There you go. This is the final thing. It, it's weird that if this cap isn't on, it just puts all the compression out. So it's like, it's got to be on tight enough, obviously. It's not big enough. enough. It's too big, it's too... During the narration, we shall say that Tom failed to find the correct spanner. Here's our automatic lubricator. It's pretty full, so we're just gonna. So, top what it does up. that lubricator do? Um, it dr so there's a pipe. Or what does it lubricate? Um, basically the, the the internal linkage. It drips. There's a little pipe right here there that go. connects to it. It drips down. In the boiler. Not into the boiler, but there's like there's the small little pipes that lead to okay. the valve gearing. Yeah, here. this is the steam dome, so it puts yeah. a little bit of oil in the steam dome. Just a tiny bit. So then that goes forward and gets into your cylinders, which really helps because otherwise you don't have a lot of lubricant. But our steam in these miniature locomotives tends to be really wet, so if yeah. the lubricator doesn't work. The nice thing with these caps. If you're out way away from the steam bays and you lose your lubricator, decides it doesn't work, you can take these caps off. And just do it straight and from there. And just lube it there and then put it back on. It could get you back to the steamy bay without doing a lot of damage, in theory. That's what they all say. Yeah. And then the... Two more right here. So we have one right here on the drivers. Oh, well, I see three. Hold on, gotta pump it out. Yeah, two more right here. One right here. All right. Um. So after I just top this off, make sure I got everything. Everything that moves. All right. Yeah. Uh, your turn. So. Okay then. <laughs> If you I'll want just me turn to. this off and no, yeah. just one side's yeah. enough. One side's it's enough. all the same. And then just going on to get some charcoal for the engine. Hi, Richard. Okay, so I just used this hose to fill up this tank for that steamer. And now it's just time to pump it. Fine, I can do some pumping. Yeah, I'll get you started. Thanks, Richard. And that's the beautiful coal, and then the charcoal is over here for starting it up. And if you notice, there's a dog running around here. That's Kona. Uh-huh, that's Kona. And there's the owner, Tom, our esteemed president. It's kind of gross. Ladies, I'd be wearing. He'll bite you. I know you can't hear much because the microphone's pointed the other direction. <laughs> Need to break up the charcoal briquettes. Because that firebox is quite small. I'm gonna get a couple. You should be able to break it in your hand. We got the charcoal inside the 
firebox, and now we're using a butane torch. <clears throat> How does this one work? Where's I've the never... spark? Where's the spark? Oh, that's a spark. Okay. This would be a sign of things to come later, as that was not the spark, or... But, anyway, you'll find out soon enough, and I'll have to explain it through voiceover. Oh, there you go. I'm trying to remember to speak into the microphone. No, nope, let's not do that. Okay, now I can see. I can actually see in there. Okay, it's on fire. Yep. Oh my gosh. Keep going out. Hold on. Let me figure... Okay. Yeah. I need more on this side. <clears throat> more on the right. <clears throat> you just need like an even Wait, bed. Even on both sides? Realistically, yeah. Now I've driven a propane-fired... I've driven a propane-fired steam engine before, but this is the first time with coal. This microphone. Okay, I hope this is better. As I was messing around with my microphone setup, we kept on trying to get that butane torch to stay on. Eventually, it stayed long enough that the charcoal caught fire, it's glowing and the coal yeah. would catch fire from that. Eh, we'll be right back. Got a good fire going now. With a very loud blower that is so comically oversized. It's working real good though. Oh yeah. I see the smoke coming out of it. Every time I open this regulator we lose a lot of pressure. Okay. So I think we wait. We're just trying to get enough pressure now to go around. Yeah. It just has a hand pump and a axle pump. Cylinders are, cylinder drain clocks are almost completely cleared, so we're going to close those. Now we wait a little bit longer. So 40 pounds per square inch is where we can sit for a little bit. Fire needs to be stoked, so we get some more coal. Shovel it in there. With our plastic spoon, we don't have anything else. Good old plastic spoon. Now we're cooking. Always a challenge getting started. Once you get rolling, everything is fine. So you see, look at all the water coming out of the drain cups. Those are still quite cold. Yeah. So we're just easing her, easing her open. Build, still building pressure. But, but there's a lot of sitting and waiting with this locomotive. Because of the fact that the boiler is so small, every slight, every, every pump, extra pump that we give her lowers the pressure by 20 pounds. Every time we open the firebox door and shovel it in, if we're not moving, we don't have extra draft from our cylinders, and therefore the fire is not as strong. 
so that's why it's always the most difficult part of getting on the rails moving so that you can get the pump the water pumps working you don't have to pump water anymore you get off of the cycle of worrying about pressure 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 it's always pressure I sit and wait for a little bit I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep managing my fire Ah, oh, smell of coal burning. And I know, Nate, you want to f coal this too, but I'm having a difficult time. And if I'm having a difficult time, you're gonna have a difficult time. I'm sure I will. Getting this thing rolling. But uh, there goes Richard. We also have a friend, another friend here, Alex. Ah. So. <sighs> Okay, you didn't see the second attempt, but all you know is that we did a first attempt and that was successful. This is the first time. This is the first time we're doing this. Now we had to go back and put the blower on and all that stuff, so... What? I have to be honest to the viewers. <laughs> so if you here. haven't put two and two together already, we had to go back to the steaming bay, put the blower back on, and get the fire started up again since we lost pretty much all the pressure possible. So this was the second attempt and there will be a third attempt until we actually figure out what works with this engine. Okay, so this is a terrible steamer. Not really a terrible live steamer, but yes. It goes to show that this locomotive is true to its predecessors. Water into the boiler. Yeah, this isn't great. Okay. It's fun. The challenge is fun. It also makes you want to scream and curse. Isn't a hobby supposed to be relaxing? I don't know anymore. And then you realize relaxing. it's supposed to be, then you just, that, relaxing. I've got fun with trains. It's all about work. Oh uh, boy. And we're just trying again. That's the blower. Nice model otherwise. Oh boy. Attempt number three at getting steam. Here we go again. Leave some steam for me. <laughs> All right, Nate. Well, okay, we gotta keep this thing moving. All right, she's ready for you. Let me just check your fire. Oh yeah. You gotta shovel some fresh coal in there. At least a metal spoon would be better. Yeah. Mm. That happened to be long, too. Mm. Now, we get to break down gunk, so you just kind of wiggle it around, and then we press down the middle. Wiggle it around, press down the middle a little bit. Pull it out, prepare your seat, signal to your friend that she's ready, get on.
Yeah, okay then. It's still recording. Give us two toots, my friend. Regulators in forward. If you need to give yourself a push, do it. Keep an eye on that gauge glass. Alright, you can throw her in reverse now. Okay. Alright, gauge. Throw her in reverse. You have lots of steam. Don't pump. Throw her in reverse. Let the, let the, let the actual locomotive do the pumping for you. Ready? Go, go. Well, we're gonna let Nate play around. We're gonna cut it here for now. Yeah, this Had a successful run around the track. Able to build steam back up. The key with this engine is to overfire it and put in a lot of coal. He's pumping in more water right now. Shortly after this successful run, Richard and I took turns running the engine around, and after we were done with our run, someone decided to take over filming for me, and this is what he captured. We're in, we're in Nate's phone. Yeah. What would you like to say to the world? Can we give him a sh an eye? We'll give him an eyeball. <laughs> Here, give him your eyeball. The one good eyeball left. Richard got a few things in his eye on the previous run, mainly cinders because there was a roaring fire and the safety valve went off at the same time while inside the tunnel. He is currently recovering. Hey Kona. Take me away. Here, lick the phone. 
Here, look at Spawn. No, no. Oh, this is what truly happens at Southern California Live Steamers. Behind the scenes outtakes. So I was running back into the yard in order to drop the ash pan because the engine was very low on water both in the tender and inside the boiler. So, and also we were pretty low on coal at this point. So yeah, had to drop the ash pan quickly and Tom almost burns me to death. How Charlie did it I'm so over exaggerating fast. here, but he eh, nothing it. happened. He just like he grabbed it and unhinged it. It's it's not that bad. Okay, okay, let me try. Hi. There it goes. It's kind of sideways. And yeah, whatever. Trying to get the ash pan to drop. Hey, how'd you drop this ash pan? You just grab it and you pull it out of the slot, and then it'll it, then it'll just fall. Yeah. But you, you just gotta be careful to not put your hands there for too long. You see the slots? Okay. Push it towards. Push it to your left arm. I didn't want to go towards me. Thanks. Oh, did we get that on film? You alright? Nothing got on you? Yeah, that was on film, but not the ashes and everything. Eesh. Well, I'd say that's successful. <laughs> hey. Well, I think that's enough for today, so until next time, this has been Nate's Vintage Trains, and thank you for watching. Until next time, God bless. No.